What is up, Hardcore Nation? It's Hardcore Christopher here, and today I'm going to be reacting to What Culture Gaming's 8 Worthless Video Game Items You Never Use. So, let's get right into this. Hello, all you little demons. Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes, you, the person that bigged up their new studio on last week's episode and then realized that the soundproofing hasn't arrived yet, hence the lovely echoey vibes. I'm sorry. Yes, you get to decide a list that I dole out to you each and every week. And today we have da, 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 Venom Triple D to thank for their suggestion of useless video game items. And it got me thinking that sometimes a video game hero is only as good as their items. I mean, sure, you can have enough spunk to give the big bad of the digital realm the middle finger, but if you're only armed with a four... Is the... is the... Is the walking stick from Jacqueline Hyde going to be on here? Walking just to your hopes and dreams. Well, I'm afraid you're about to get squashed like a fleshy tent peg. And therefore, useless video game items, well, they stand out even more. So you know what? Let's detail them today as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight useless video game items you never used. You know the drill by now. Say hi to me here in the live chat. For some reason, I don't know which side it's going to be on because this whole new studio setup has thrown me. Say hello to me in the live chat and leave your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comment section below. But now, let's get on with the list. Number 8. The Wooden Shield, Bloodborne. So as anyone who has played even a minute of Bloodborne can tell you, this game is not Dark Souls. Created as almost the antithesis to the former series' block and turtle poke strategies, Bloodborne is all about dodging, and it will punish those who aren't quick enough or who try to rely on the tactics of old that got them through their sister franchise. And something that makes this philosophy crystal clear is the wooden shield, which looks like it's made out of a rotten shed just stapled together with the collective will of everyone in the room. It is pathetic. This item is utterly worthless, barely blocking any damage and removes access to one of your weapons, which in this game is like trying to tie one arm behind your back and then going to wrestle a greasy pig. Trust me. That's a big pig. Big pig for big bacon. And big bacon for big ham. So on and so forth. I ain't gonna end well. FromSoft knew entirely what they were doing with this inclusion in this game, and if you tried to rely on blocking to get you through Bloodborne, well, you're gonna have a bad time. So do yourself a favor and bin this buckler. Number seven, the PS20 Deus Ex. So let's do a little bit of roleplay here. You are a super spy and I am a shady weapons dealer. If I was to come up to you and say, hey, my friend, would you like to have a plasma pistol that shoots burning material into the face of your foes and also won't create an unsightly bulge in your pantaloons that you're wearing? You'd probably say, hell yeah, brother. Keep it real, why you wanna fake? Make you shiver like an earthquake. Hit the ground like a landscape. Cook, cook, cook. Sign me up. I mean, who wouldn't want that, right? I mean, it's a portable nuclear reactor that could definitely help with stealth missions. So, what's the catch? Well, despite the PS20 marketing itself as being the one-stop shop for everyone who likes that plasma pop, this game is utter hot garbage. And its shortcomings become pretty apparent the moment you actually try using it, as this plasma pistol has just one shot before it runs out of ammo completely and is rendered useless. God, talk about pressure, right? I mean, one shot, you better not bloody miss. And it's here that the weapon's second setback comes into play, as even if you do channel slime Jesus through you and nail that perfect headshot, there's a good chance that the enemy won't even die thanks to the weapon's pathetic damage output. Oh, goody, we've created a scenario where it's like trying to take down... So what you thought was great actually turned out to be horrible. Congratulations. And a hired goon with a toy found from a cereal box. Brilliant. And speaking of toys, number six, Toys Dead Rising. So when it comes to cereal box tat, Dead Rising is absolutely chock full of the stuff. I've played Dead Rising and I was never able to beat it. From 
baking ingredients to shower heads, the Willamette Mall is absolutely bursting with everyday items that Frank West can use to re-dead the undead with. However, there are some absolute stinkers in the bunch, namely any of the toys that you can pick up. While the sight of Frank trying to save survivors with a giant teddy from hordes of the undead is genuinely comical, it's easily the most pointless thing that you can try and defend yourself with because it will do zero damage to your enemies. Plus, the comedy kind of wears off pretty quickly when you realise that this is the height of that scenario. Like, there are no other levels to this joke. It's just a guy with a toy. Now in the later games, everything becomes deadly because the player is able to combine objects together to create disturbing and devastating weapons, and yes, even the teddy bear becomes this righteous Rambo of a weapon. But in the original, Jesus, I've sat through Christian Slater films that were less arduous. That's a very timely reference, I know, and only because of the fact that I watched Alone in the Dark the film the other day. What a waste of my life. <laughs> Number five, all fishing equipment, Path of Exile. So, first things first, I need to give credit where credit is due and calm this finger down because Zoe Miskelly, calm down, Zoe Miskelly, who's a fantastic writer and presenter for the What Culture team, she turned me on to the Path of Exile game and oh my god, there's, there's only one way to describe it and that is noish. Because not only is it a fantastic dungeon crawler in the line. I really like this format. Diablo and Boulder's Gate, but it also has one of the best in-jokes in the entire video game history, and, oh, I just love it, because it's so utterly stupid. To better explain, let's set the scene. Now, Path of Exile really tries hard to shake off being just a clone of the giants like Diablo and Boulder's Gate that I mentioned before, because it's got really engaging gameplay and huge amounts of customization. And as you'd expect from such a title, it's all about the loot, baby! So grinding and enemy farming are order of the day. However, in amongst all of the golden shields and purple helmets that you'll pick up, you'll find that a lot of gear actually ends up boosting, incredibly so, your fishing abilities. Now, you probably think as you're collecting this, oh, brilliant, I'll combine all of these and that legendary bass is about to get its ass handed to him. Well, you know what, my friend? Let's just slow your roll for just a second because there's no fishing in this game. Yeah, that's right, it is just a dumb but altogether brilliant joke from the devs that renders a huge swathe of items utterly useless. And I think it's absolutely perfect. Number four, Secret Boots, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Oh me, oh my, are we in for a treat today because I get to talk to you about the Secret Boots. Now before we begin, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is just... But they're Secret Boots, so that means they must be good. Otherwise, they wouldn't be secret. Right? Right? Oh my god, I feel the proof. Chef's kiss. I adore the art style, I adore the combat and exploration, and I adore that goddamn soundtrack. But there's one thing I don't love, and that's the secret boots. Because while these sound like magical shoes that will imbue you with enhanced speed or jumping abilities, they instead make you ever so slightly taller. Yep, that's it. And the game even goes so far as to highlight just how minuscule the change is by stating that they only discreetly make Alucard's sprite taller. So what is the point of these secret boots? Well, according to the game, it's to gain access to secret hidden rooms that have just generic items in. Sick. No, please, pop on these weird clogs. Fantastic. Why not complete the look with some padded gloves of slight finger extending or some hidden shorts that have the crotch missing? What is the point of these? They are absolutely useless. Oh, and also, a side note, by the way, speedrunners never use the secret boots because they stand a... greater chance of breaking the game entirely. Excellent. Number three, Love Ball, Pokemon. So I think it's pretty safe to say that the Pokemon franchise is one that is built on love, right? I mean, it was part of our childhood. So instrumental was it? I mean, spending days after school. Yes, very much so. Uh, I still know the theme song to this day. Watching the animated series or huddling around on the playground trading with each other with the dodgy link cables that sometimes wouldn't work and it would just cause absolute chaos or hidden in the back like the true nerds that we were playing the card game. It was so embedded in our childhood that of course we loved it. A very complicated card game at that. 
but I was less enamoured with the love ball from the Generation 2 games because they, well, they were an absolute bloody disgrace. Now, on paper, the ball sounds like the absolute business because it boasts an eight times capture rate, which by itself is utterly amazing. But much like a pig's penis, there is a twist in coming because this ball only has a bonus when trying to capture Pokemon of the opposite sex to the Pokemon you have out on the field. Now, suddenly it is much less useful, but it would still have some very specific cases where it could be useful. Unfortunately, though, the games were actually bugs, and it turned out that it didn't actually boost the capture rate against opposite sex Pokemon, but actually same sex Pokemon instead, meaning that you had a greater chance of capturing a Pokemon you already had. Sick. Thanks. Cool. Brill. No. Cool. I'll pick up this check. Daddy's got, Daddy's got lots of cash. Off. Number two, Smoke Ball, Smash Brothers. Surrounding out a sack of balls, so disappointing I thought that they were my own. Let's talk about the Smoke Ball from Super Smash Brothers. It is one of the most useless items ever to grace the fine face of this fighting franchise because whereas most items in this game will help you get the leg up over your opponent, chucking one of these into the fray might actually blow smoke up your own ass. Now, according to the devs, the smoke ball was meant to be used to unleash a smoke screen so that you could mask your own movements, dive in, and attack using combos that your opponent couldn't see. Now, that sounds great, right? Until you actually try putting it into practice because as it is a smoke screen, it also obscures your opponent's attacks as well, meaning that you could just jump straight into the fray and get worthless. absolutely devastated by something you couldn't even see coming. How is this useful again? I mean, you can do a minuscule amount of damage if you hit them with the smoke ball, but therein lies the positives. And when I'm saying that that, that tiny bit of health damage, that chip damage, is a positive, and that is the only good thing I can say about this, you know how utterly crap that item is. In fact, every time that I've come across one, I'm not entirely sure if it is smoke that's emanating from the ball or steam coming out from my own bloody ears. And number one, the wooden sword, Skyrim. So remember the wooden shield that I detailed at at the opening of this list? We know what, let's round this. Well, yes. Out by combining that absolute piece of tosh with a dull log that is just useless. Yes, it's time to talk about the wooden sword. Now, in a world of dragons and dungeons, in that order for legal reasons, weapons of mythical might are ten a penny. I mean, you've got like hammers that will obliterate enemies, staffs that shoot waves of fire, and of course, forks that do one million points of damage. But that is another story. Therefore, with all of these weapons at your disposal, getting a wooden sword from a random loot chest was like somebody laughing in your face loudly and obnoxiously. A fuss row ha, if you will. Ah, yes, yes, hello, I'm Jules, I make jokes. Yet thanks to the Hearthfire DLC, this was now a possibility as these barely sharpened logs would just begin appearing in your game with the expansion installed. Oh brilliant, this is exactly what I wanted after going through a difficult dungeon to be potentially rewarded with a slightly pointed but otherwise pointless stick. Mmm. With the lowest base damage in the game, which is tying with a base level fork, the wooden sword is utterly useless. I mean, sure, you can give it to one of your adopted kids and get a little bonus, but at the same time, in this world where danger lurks around every corner, don't give them a wooden sword. Give them the real sword. They'll need it. I mean, half the people are getting attacked on the day to day. What are they going to do? Oh, oh, watch out. I'll stab you with my unleaded pencil. And the werewolf that is attacking him is just kind of like, oh... I actually feel bad about eating you now. I still will, though. It is a dull brown log in every sense of the word and needs to be placed on the f***ing hearth fire itself. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight completely useless video game items that nobody ever used. I hope that you enjoyed that. And I know what you're about to say. Jules, where's the musical interlude today? Well, the thing is, I don't really want to sing today when there's so much echo going on. It will just sound even worse than usual. Plus, I still think that James is dead. So kind of want to just make sure that he's all right at the moment. I also need to go into like, the legal things as well. I mean, do I have to pay his family royalties? Uh, he did some work on the tracks. I mean, obviously we should just split this between us, really, shouldn't we? Well, yeah, he gets like 50 million per song, so surely that should go to us, right? Yeah, I, I mean, even if he is on screen right now, like, I, just cut him straight out. Just cut him straight out. Well, Yoko Ono him. <laughs> anyway.
Anyway, yes, I will return to doing the uh, musical interlude stuff at some point in the future, but just once the studio's a bit more fleshed out and has got the soundproofing up. So, yes, stay tuned for that. Remember to put your suggestion for next week's episode down in the comments section below. And if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal board game channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. Before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about useless video game items, but you, you listening to this video, you are not useless. I know that sometimes we can beat ourselves up mentally and tell ourselves that we're not worth anything, but I just need to stress this as clearly as I can. You are worth everything. There's only one of you. You only get one chance in this crazy blue marble, so make the bloody most of it, because you deserve... Thank you for the motivational speech. ...love, happiness, and success. And don't let anything or anyone tell you otherwise. You are unique. And you deserve love. It's just as simple as that. I know I keep banging on about it, but you see so many people in this day and age that go around and they just beat themselves up constantly. They never allow themselves a chance to rest or celebrate the good work that they've done. Give yourself a break. Be kind to yourself because you f***ing well deserve it. So yeah, big love from me to you. Treat yourself well. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Okay guys, that was my reaction to 8 worthless video game items you never use. I hope you all enjoyed this reaction, and I'm Hardcore Christopher. Keep it hardcore everyone.